down and Nebraska met a couple of months ago. The Huskers dominated the boards, a plus 18 margin in that game. Brenda Freeze told us we have to rebound the ball in this matchup, and they've improved drastically in that area. Both teams have won seven of their last nine games. They'll tell you playing their best basketball of the season, and they put it on the line in Minneapolis. Daniel almost losing it on the first possession. It's a jump ball and Husker basketball with the bench fired up. Just by bringing that ball low. Someone was able to use her length, her timing, and her defense also helping to elevate her all Big Ten freshman team as Nisley, another selection, already draining a three. And Nebraska spreads the floor at a high level, forces the defense to also have to spread out and guard a lot of space. They've been able to knock down a ton of threes just by spacing the floor at a high level off that skip pass. Nisley had 11 points in the third quarter yesterday, had three threes when Markowski got her third foul. She was absolutely huge for the Huskers. Potts again has the angle. It stays with the Huskers. Nisley, a hot hand for this team. No good that time. This is what Maryland wants to do. Get out and run in transition. This is where they absolutely excel. So many great athletic guards that can beat anybody in a white jersey up the floor. And you have McDaniel who wants to run you over. Aggressive defense from Alexander Nisley able to find Moriarty. She misfires from three, but Markowski sticking with it, and she'll shoot two. Markowski having an excellent tournament, and yesterday in the second quarter, 12.6 of six. There was one possession where she missed four times, got the offensive rebound each and every time. Sellers into the front court. Sees Callan Hake on her, wants that matchup, but can't get it to fall. And Masonis, the do-everything player, the offensive putback. Faith Masonis does so many thankless things for Maryland. She's willing to battle down low. Callan Hague had a great round two. They're seven deep right now. That's it. Sellers forces it up wildly. Nebraska's really crowding Cheyenne Sellers, especially when she gets into the paint. There's two bodies right there meeting her. Falls to the floor and a foul on the Terrapins. It is an eight to four lead for Nebraska here in Minneapolis, the Big Ten tournament. There are three guarantees in March, death taxes and Brenda Freeze in March doing big things. <laughs> Finally, this Maryland team has connected on the defensive end. Maryland switches with their man-to-man -man defense. As you see right there, you have to communicate at a high level and understand each other's tendencies. They have that chemistry now, and it's paid off in a big way in this tournament. Especially with the different waves of adversity they face. First, Emma Chardon missing the entire season. Riley Nelson, a five-star recruit. Lavender Briggs, who had 25 points against this Husker team. And they've been able to click. Sellers says, we just never lost connectivity or confidence or belief in ourselves. And that starts at the top with leadership with Coach Freeze and people like Faith Masonis as well, who has been in Maryland's program as long as she has. This is a team that has Elite Eight experience. They know what it's like to compete in March. Alan Hake on this side. She's getting it going for the Huskers, up to five points. Sellers being guarded by the five foot seven Darian White. And she's going to try and run right over her with the run. Right on cue, 5 7 for 6 2. Cheyenne Sellers was licking her chops like I'm getting down in there to the paint. Deering White was a two time defensive player of the year in the big sky, but a little different here in the Big Ten tournament. Sellers moving into the point guard role this season, going to work with that high screen in oh. the mid range. Was on point yesterday. The lob finds its way to Stewart, and she is hit. Foul going on Brene Alexander. That is her second. And always something to watch with Maryland, because again, they only go seven deep at this point in the year. Defense! 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 Played a big role yesterday with Markowski in some foul trouble. Can't get back to Clark. Terps are going to reset in the closing two minutes. Whoa. But threading the needle is Sellers finding Kubek. 
She's shooting the ball at a high level, assisting at a high level, defending at a high level, doing everything for everybody right now in a black jersey, Cheyenne Sellers. Three assists, four points already with the Huskers striking right back. Jazz Shelly getting to the rim. Emily Fisher, an offensive foul. It is Hake who steps in. Shelly, a quick closeout from Sellers. That was excellent, but she loses her footing, and Shelly makes her pay. A big smile getting back on deep. Jack Shelly smiled and ran away before the shot even went through the basket. That's when you know coming off your hand, that's going in. You just saw the group of Husker fans on their feet. Ooh, their reaction to that ridiculous play from Shelly. Sellers that time loses it. Shelly back to back. An eight nothing run for the Huskers. Brown Turner along two rims out, and Markowski right there for her eighth board already. Shelly, are you serious? Excuse me, I thought Caitlin Clark was playing in the next game, but Jazz Shelly absolutely dominating all the range. Down in Transo, and they are a lot more aggressive. Number one has three threes. They've made five threes, right? So we've got to close. While the ball is in the air, we've got to be able to close long. Megan, you heard from Brenda there. That's become a mantra of this team. The only team who can beat us is ourselves, her message after that first quarter. And transition defense is something you can control because it is all about trying to get back and stop the other team. Kendall Moriarty shaking up after that last play, taking a hard spill. What was it on? Stepped into a starting role in the latter part of this season, helped to her feet by her teammates. Mori already looks ready to take these free throws. That foul officially assessed to Bree McDaniel. That is her second. Moriarty goes 0 for 2. The Terps back on the attack. Sona surveying, she often running the point guard for this team too, playing basically one through five. Now 10 to shoot from the zone. Underneath the defense, she is craftier than anyone. Underneath the defense, and she did a great job keeping the defense on her back for that finish. Wow, what a pass. No help defense, but Markowski gets the offensive rebound and put back. She's got nine boards, six points. You're lucky enough for Markowski to miss the initial layup. You have to be ready to box her out. She's absolutely killed Maryland on second chance opportunities right now. If Maryland can play fast, that is going to be an advantage for them. Markowski to the bench with two personals herself. This is where you start to see really good coaching come in. It becomes a chess match. You have players in foul trouble. Now how can Maryland attack offensively without Markowski's shot blocking in the middle of the paint? And then defensively, you have to win the rebounding battle without Markowski in this game if you're Maryland. McDaniel dialing up that defense where she likes to tap into to try and ignite herself and this team. Good from three, and McDaniel was a double-double in this tournament, picks it up. Sellers stepping into a three and draining a three. Sellers in rhythm, focused on that shot. Kroll is the Oscars moving around the perimeter. Sellers getting that matchup on Shelly. Stewart's way down. 
downtown. That Maryland huddle was not happy about the threes in a row from Jazz Shelley. Three in a row saying that's too easy. This team has deep range, so we got to step up on them and close out hard. And I ran over to Nebraska's bench and Coach Williams saying to her team she wants to get Jazz Shelley more involved and exploit those ball screens and also try to keep her going, keep her hot, and get in a stance because Sellers is trying to take over and get in the paint. But we also saw Sellers get a three. Scoring in the paint is Nebraska that time, but I'm talking about Jazz Shelley. That was a solo 11 nothing run to close that court. Most of those threes were in transition as well. She just reads ball screens at such a high level. Learned from Sabrina Unescu when she was at Oregon starting out her career. Sellers glancing up at the clock. Chance to reset for the Terps, but she will pull up hand in her face and the whistle. The Buckeyes clashing with the Scarlet Knights at 7.30. The Terps sticking on the Nittany Lions. Big Ten Hoops presented by Jeep. Tomorrow only on the Big Ten Network. And the second, I liked hearing that from Coach Freeze today, where Sellers missed a couple yesterday, normally 85%. After the technical on Kevin McGuff, the head coach of, of Ohio State, Sellers said, I want them back. And she steps up once more. She has the right mindset. Cheyenne Sellers hates to lose more than she loves to win, and that's what makes her such a special player. And Bree McDaniel, goodness gracious, she can finish through any sort of contact. So strong as Brown Turner in the passing lane. The booth is much warmer, by the way, and the sideline reporting, it's a good deal with the elements. The booth, you can stay warm in football games. <laughs> Brown Turner spinning. 6 nothing run for the Terps. You mentioned it. Freeze knows how to bring that out of her team. Shelly launches again. Sonas has her hands down. As a shooter, you know when hands down, man down. That's when you shoot the ball. you got to get a hand in her face. Sonas, the long two, can respond. McDaniel battling, but it is Kate who will push up the floor. The trailer, Petrie. Wow, Nebraska! As the defense is in a scramble situation, Maryland has to match up on the perimeter quickly. Popping inside is Kubek. Much needed bucket. The Maryland team that is near the bottom in three point rates. You're not going to see that climbing out of this hole. Petrie will keep check leaving that short. Why not? Jazz and Shelly magnificent in her performance so far. So you talked about the depth of the Huskers. It's so important to have depth in March. Today, Alexander gathers and lays it in. If Alexander can get things going. I look at McDaniel. Lob inside the Markowski. She's hit hard. The Nebraska is now being smart and trying to get in front of her and bait her into some of those charge calls. Markowski touching every part of the rim. That does not go. Already up to 10 rebounds. Four points away from her 19th double double this season. Hit a deep three earlier on as Nebraska taking control of this first half. Sellers sizing up this mismatch. Brown Turner. Two points for her, but she has been just sensational in Big Ten play. She's been sensational defensively tonight. Had some really big plays already on this end of the ball. They need to get her going, especially in transition. Darian White, a fearless take and high off the glass. That can't happen for Maryland. You have to cut off Darian White's angle. She's had a straight line drive to the basket. Sellers forcing the oh, issue up yes. and in. Cheyenne Sellers right now is on another level. Oscars going to reset with Shelley. Kendall Coley. Another three. The Minnesota native getting in on the party. And the Huskers continue to roll with their tent from long range. Which again speaks to the depth we've been talking about. The ball is moving so quickly offensively for Nebraska. So Maryland's defense is shifting. 
too slow, and Nebraska's been able to get open looks as a result. Sotis takes off to the cup and earns herself a trip to the free throw line. Gonna head to the day to come in the semifinal Saturday. That is all coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report. Sonis getting the assignment on Shelly, extending that defense far. And snatched away the freshman, Emily Fisher, playing important minutes in the Big Ten tournament. Sellers trying to turn the corner, muscles her way up. They put it in the hands of Shelly. She lost the three that time far off the mark, but White, the Huskers, bring a little full court pressure. Brown Turner puts it on the floor, is denied, but Mazonis oh. follows it up. Faith Mazonis is so tough. Maryland's having success getting the ball to the rim right now, and in the second half, that could open up opportunities from three. Six-nothing run for the Terrapins. Shot clock is off for Nebraska. State Farm halftime report coming up is Shelly off glass, but an offensive foul. With the biggest play of the half comes, gets to the spot, and right there, Shelly falls completely into her to draw that charge. Brown Turner glances up, will have to heave, gets front iron. Was there a timeout call? Point eight remaining. This is enough time for a catch and heave. Alexander will go to Brown Turner, puts it on the floor, it won't count. And a two-possession game. Fun to watch, but a little scary, too, if you're an opponent. Three-point shots as a team are contagious. You see one person getting hot, all of a sudden it spreads like wildfire. Nebraska is the type of team that they've got a lot of depth. They have a lot of players that shoot it above 35% clip from beyond the arc. And it starts because people are concerned about Markowski. But now that the threes are going, they can get Markowski going because she'll have a little more room in the paint. Masonis able to take it away one-on-one -on -one with Shelly. Works oh. the spin, the drop off, and finished by Brown Turner. Faith Masonis with the high IQ play because she drew two jerseys towards her and it led to an open lane for her teammate. Cheyenne Sellers in the post game yesterday said, you can highlight my name a thousand times, but it is Faith who holds this team together, keeps us going, no need her big in the second half. They call her the mother of the team. She's been around for a long time at this point. The watcher, one, two, three white jerseys pay attention to her, and that leads to an open opportunity for Jakia Brown Turner. Another pass, didn't see coming. Renee Alexander able to get that to fall, and Maryland clicking here to start. With Nebraska shooting the three ball as well as they did in the first half, they've got to keep going inside to force the defense to stay down low. The bucket in the paint. And going coast to coast. Another starter with three personals. That is Jazz Shelley. So McDaniel and Shelley on either side in the first half of this third quarter. Brown Turner netting the three-point play, and they want to get her going. She's up to eight. Maryland back in this game because they've been able to establish a presence in the lane. Ten threes to one. And yet a one possession game. Markowski, there's a double team from Sellers who takes a shot, but Markowski powers it up and in Nebraska to one and done. Markowski hasn't been able to get those rebound put back opportunities. McDaniel puts her head down, plows to the rim. The men will be here in Minneapolis shortly. Minneapolis has been a great host city, by the way. Shout out to your hometown. Not hometown, but where you live. Correct, yeah. I mean, you think last year? Multiple attendance records, including overall. We're expecting to see 
double that. Special member of the Shelley family, her grandfather, Alan Garraway. I sure am, and he took nearly a 20-hour flight to get here for Jazz Shelley's last ride. What does it mean to you to be here? It just it feels great. We've traveled with her all around the world when she was in the World Championships and stuff like that. So we've just traveled, seen her play, watched her play, supported her. That's all we've done all the time. I know this is very special to you. You mentioned that you've been to some Illinois games and just making sure that you're present in her last ride. And she's having a phenomenal game. What have you liked so far about her play? All her play. Her shooting um, and the way she handles the ball and conducts the offense. She already has five threes. What did you think about those? Sorry? She already had five threes in this game. What do you think about them? Well, she had one straight away about three in a row just about yeah they were fantastic they were great shots what was your first memory of jazz shelley playing basketball played under eight basketball in in Mo in maui and she was a great competitor oh she was after it all the time where did she get it from mom and dad <laughs> mom and dad definitely if she could hear you right now what would you say to her well done i always you try to give her positives and that's what she likes. She likes the positives. She doesn't like too many negatives. She knows when she's done something wrong. And that's what it's about. I know you're proud of her. Enjoy the game. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much. Families always have to make sacrifices, but especially if you're halfway across the world. That's a long flight. That's love. If you're willing to get on a plane for 20 hours for somebody. I love when you gotta love the relationship between granddaughter and grandpa. Her family was able to see her performance against Iowa and seeing another one great here this afternoon. Shelly, 19 points. So does the hesitation, but can't finish. Just with Markowski being in the paint, she alters shots because of her size and shot blocking ability. McDaniel, meanwhile, picking up her fourth personal foul. And she goes to the bench. This is a big opportunity for Nebraska to stay aggressive, especially from the guard position. Drew McDaniel is so difficult to get by defensively. And the her second three in her hometown. What makes Nebraska so dangerous is not only their ability to spread the floor, but eight assists for Jazz Shelley. Alexander, Ooh. that touch, nothing going down. Maryland needed that in the baddest way. Brene Alexander finally able to get a look from three. Nebraska has not allowed her to even touch the ball beyond the arc. Exactly right. Her first even attempt from long range. Shelley oh. over her head and another assist. The flashy play has Nebraska rolling. Jazz Shelley has that foreign flair. Overseas, the fundamentals are, are worked on so much more than they are in the U.S. regarding the game and what is emphasized. And Jazz Shelley is showing that passing ability, that high basketball IQ. Are you kidding me? A no-look pass? I mean, this is spicy right now that we are seeing from the Aussie. Our play with a plan brought to you by TIAA. Sellers. Stewart is also strong off the bench. Shelly, though, stopped that time. Faith Masona has boxed out Kendall Coley before Josh Shelly even shot the ball. Getting in that right position, ensuring that they keep Nebraska to one and done. Just four rebounds from back to back double doubles. Just four in her career. Alexander, great look, she's got it. Shelly, an offensive foul waving off. Five seconds left for Sellers sweeping through. That's left short. Masonis mobbed. And that is the end of the third quarter. Nebraska gripping to a one-point lead, and we head to the fourth. Maryland talks about having that dog mentality. A dog mentality means you hate to lose more than you love to win. 
And that is what Maryland has shown in this second half. They've come out, made all the right plays, gotten the spots, won the rebounding battle. Now they just have to focus on trying to finish this one and keeping Alexis Markowski at bay. Nebraska has never trailed. And they get the ball back. Tend to shoot for Hake. He's going to take it right at Sellers and earn the whistle. First foul on Masonis. Hake with five points, stepping up to the free throw line, brings the first. The number eight seed has never been there. Nebraska hasn't since 2014. Brown Turner. Wants that three. It's off target and Pot snags it. Maryland needs some more ball movement. During timeouts, Shy and Diane, or uh, Diamond rather, were looking at each other. Diamond's coaching her. They have a great friendship and it's awesome to see. Shelly gets it to fall. Six three pointers for Jazz Shelly. Gotta get her in her chest though. Underneath a good quick finish. Kubek. Five assists now for Faith Masonis, doing it all. Daniel out to guard Shelly with her four personal fouls. Nisley. Add it up again. Logan Nisley makes it 13-3. There's a high hedge. Masonis, the quick pass. Five on the clock for Brown Turner. Shakes her defender. Can't knock it down. It's Stewart with it. White snaking the baseline. Potts patient and the touch on the floater. Maryland did a great job getting back initially to prevent an easy layup, but then on a scramble situation, Potts was able to make him pay. Daniel going to take Shelly off the dribble. That is five on the offensive foul. Sellers went out. Green McDaniel went to Brenda Brees and said, hey, I'll play a point guard. You can do whatever you need for the team. And you see the obvious emotions and frustration with fouling out. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into this. And this is something that means so much more to these players than people realize. Green McDaniel wears her heart on her sleeve with this team. Autumn's got an update on Nebraska. Yeah, very animated in that huddle for this Nebraska team saying, hey, everyone think about that time during the offseason back in the weight room as Jack Shelley gets it inside. Brown Turner. Kubik now wide open for three. She's got it. Potts on the attack. Leaves it for Markowski. She leaves it short. Sellers wrapped up in fact. Maryland needing a score. They go into Sellers. She's backing down Shelly. And a foul plowing through his Minnesota. Calmly knocking down. Maryland picking up full court here. This possession will be crucial to defend without fouling. And you cannot allow an open three opportunity for Nebraska. Nebraska did a great job against the press of Michigan State yesterday. It's been a problem at times this season, including against Ohio State. This time, no issues late. Maryland dialing up that defensive intensity. Shelley's got to find somewhere to go. Four to shoot for the Huskers. Shelly, that kind of nuts. Single digit gain as Sellers forces it up. Masonis up and in. Same rule here for Maryland. Do not foul here. Just try to get a stop on this possession. Two possession contests. Block on the side of the Huskers. They'll use as much as they can. Hey, stop 
happen on a dime. That would have been a big conversion. Now a chance for the Terrapins. They've got to score quick, get to the basket. Brown Turner, no one in sight. And Shelly into her hands and a whistle. They've had good, this was a good defensive possession until the end. Jazz Shelly made a absolutely crazy shot. I mean, off balance, falling. Are you kidding me? You like yes. practice that in a horse game when you're just trying to mess around with your friends. And she just put the absolute dagger into Maryland with that shot. Grandma's chill, man. She's like, man, that wasn't that impressive. <laughs> I don't want to tell anybody how to do their job, but I need the desk to ask how many times she has practiced that shot. Oh. And also, at Kinnick Stadium, two over 55,000 for Iowa's basketball, and we are basking in the glow of the spotlight on our sport. Alexander leaves it short. Shelly coming up with a big board, and she's fat. And keep on keeping on. They're playing some of their best basketball right now, keeping at the right time. You have to put them in the NCAA tournament. You do not want to face this team right now, which says all you need to say about the Maryland Terrapin in the NCAA tournament. It's been 12 years since they last missed, but clearly a team with the resume to go. Nebraska, though, is going to be moving on in Minneapolis. Ten years in the 